Let's talk about what's happening in the world of venture capital and fundraising. We're going to do that with Alexa Von Tobel. She is from Inspired Capital. And I want to let you know that uh, her co-founder is Penny Pritzker, who you might remember from the Obama administration, but it's Alexa's insight that we want right now. Where do we stand with VC and a new administration coming in? Is there any concern that there might be taxes that crimp the investment goose? I mean, everything that we're seeing is we are in a uh, an acceleration of innovation. I think uh, prior to COVID, you saw more investment dollars coming into the private market than ever before. And all we've seen throughout COVID is acceleration of that. Um, and I think in a moment like this, which we like to call asymmetric dislocation, right, we're in a moment where you know, uh, we're going through really unique resets to the economy and to how we think about how we will live and work. Um, you're seeing innovation happen at a faster clip than ever before. And so, um, you know, we thought it was bullish prior to all of this. And I think we continue to see uh, increase in, in every element of venture uh, uh, post all of this. And so with the new administration, innovation is going to be a real big focus. Before we talk about some of the areas in which to invest, I'm curious, and I look forward to the day when this won't even be a question, what is it like to be a woman, you know, venture capitalist, especially in the tech industry? Sure. Well, you know, I was a kid growing up in the tech industry. Um, you know, after graduating from college, I was part of a company that got acquired by Facebook, went back to Harvard Business School. I was a sole founder for LearnVest, which was a, a, one of the first fintech software platforms that got acquired by Northwestern Mutual. So I've been in uh, tech my, my whole career. Um, and now that I'm in venture, I'll say, you know, Penny and I, when we launched Inspired Capital out of the gate, we're a $200 million venture fund in New York, seed and series A focus. You know, uh, out of the gate, we quickly raised one of the, the largest female-led venture funds in the country. And um, I'd like to say, just like anything else, uh, you know, life feels like we're extremely well supported um, and we're here to work really hard. And I think we um, have always been unique to the industry and I'm just very used to it. Um, but but I will say, um, you know, we're going through a really interesting uh, sea change uh, where um, I think everybody recognizes it's absolutely invaluable to have all types of of your customer base on your cap table. And so I think it's been just a wonderful win for Inspired Capital as a generalist fund investing around the country. And there, I'm on your webpage right now and I'm looking at the companies in which you've invested. If I mispronounce their names, correct me. But the one that jumped out at me, because I keep hearing digital payment, digital payment, and China's leading yet, RHO, full service digital banking for businesses. What was it that attracted you to RHO? So RO, uh, which is what it's called, it's simply a small business bank, but fully digital uh, with a software layer. So think about, you know, the true tens of millions of small businesses across the country that just need better banking infrastructure. RO effectively has almost a CFO software that's built into the platform. And on the back end, they have a marketplace for lending. So if you need debt, you actually now are in a position of strength because Roe can negotiate many different potential credit lines for you. Um, and, and again, it's very modern. And so one of the things that attracted us, you know, I sold LearnVest to Northwestern Mutual and then was chief digital officer there and understanding the incumbents. And particularly in FinTech, you have a lot of really big incumbents that have been around for decades, if not you know centuries, uh, who need better fresh tech. And so Bro is uniquely going after a, a, a category with tons of incumbents in, in place, um, but building it from the ground up with a new modern front end and all mobile first. So again, it, it hits a lot of things that we really like. And we're software builders at Inspired Capital. We know how to build full stack technologies. Um, and so that's what we look for when we think about businesses is big, big market opportunities in places where the incumbents maybe are disadvantaged, uh, but with a unique uh, technology angle. You know, when Elon Musk the other day made it public that he's moving to Texas and everybody in the financial world was clutched the pearls, uh, you seem to point out that, look, if you're looking for ed tech, remote work or health tech, now's the time to start doubling down. And places like New York City may benefit. Why New York City? Well, first of all, as somebody who's been in the New York tech scene now for 15 years, I've always been bullish on New York. It's New York City. It's kind of fun to think of New York City as an underdog in anything. Um, but I think 
COVID has just really advanced that. So first, New York City has, has matured and is rapidly continuing to mature. Uh, you know, in the last month alone, we've had a handful of billion dollar plus exits out of New York. Um, so the, the ecosystem is mature. But then additionally, the the amount of, uh, you know, concentration of capital dollars is lower here than in Silicon Valley. And then COVID happened, where what you're starting to see is distributed workforces, companies moving out of SF, um, talent moving out of SF, recognizing that being able to live elsewhere is is really quite wonderful and um, having homes and backyards. And so we're seeing that happen uh, you know, across the country. What we're starting to see a big win for New York City investing is that founders who are smart start to think about their capital partners just as strategically. And they'll say, I should have capital on the East Coast and West Coast, especially if I'm going to be creating talent pockets across the United States. That's just really smart to do. The other last thing I'll just mention about New York, um, which has just been a core thesis of inspired capital is New York's the hub of so many things, media, fintech, health tech, culture, arts, uh, you know, even a major crypto uh, economy here. Um, and so it's just truly a capital of the world on a few very big verticals. And so having great, really thoughtful, you know, operator based in, investing capital here, which is what Inspire is with the big policy angle, obviously, Penny um, has, you know, a phenomenal career herself um, as part of the DNA of the firm is just really unique. And so, uh, you know, we uh, we think COVID has actually been a big part of uh, a Boondar strategy. I encourage people to go to your website, inspiredcapital.com, and then take a look at the companies that you've invested in. And I like anything that's encouraging about New York City. I'm a little self-centered centric on that one. So I appreciate <laughs> the optimism in this COVID world we are in. Alexa Von Tobel, Inspired Capital, thank you so much for being here. And I need to point out you're a co-founder of Inspired Capital. So it's great to have you join us.